I hope that in these early weeks of 2008, the sermons on discipleship have been helpful to you. My hope is that every individual who is a member or an adherent or a friend of St. Andrew's will grow in their sense of discipleship. And wherever you are in your daily life, you will be aware that Christ is with you and that your first priority in all things is to share Christ's love. Today I want to look at the term imitate Christ. And you will note in the schedule that I send out, it says imitate Christ, but then in brackets it says at least a little bit. <laughs> I don't want to have undue expectations of you. And I have to admit, I have a little bit of cynicism about the notion of the imitation of Christ. In truth, none of us can be like Christ. If we were like Christ, we wouldn't need Christ. We are sinful and broken people. But in spite of that, perhaps now and then, we can be a little bit like Jesus was. And when we do that, we know that the power of God's love has come into us and we are so greatly enriched and strengthened by being like Him just a little bit. The way in which we can be like Christ is perhaps best displayed in the Apostle Paul and in particular in his change of name. You all know that Paul started life as Saul of Tarsus and then became the Apostle Paul. You may not know what the reasons for that change in name. They are very telling and very powerful. We firstly know that he did not change his name at the very point when he was converted. That was in chapter 9 of the Acts of the Apostles. He never used the name of Paul until chapter 13 in that story that David read this morning. And it's a powerful story in itself that Paul sets out with Barnabas and with John Mark to Cyprus and then to Paphos, the great city of Cyprus, and there Saul preaches to a man called Sergius Paulus. He is the governor of Cyprus. Saul doesn't start out with just ordinary people. He goes right for the most powerful person. And in the midst of talking to Sergius Paulus, and in the midst of an argument with a magician named Bar Joseph, or Bar Jesus, sorry, or Elimas, Sergius Paulus becomes a convert. And he is Saul's first convert to Christianity. And it's at that point in that chapter that Saul begins to call himself Paul. There's several reasons for the change. The one might have been simply that Saul was a Jewish name. And up to this point, Saul had been working amongst Jewish people, so the name worked. But he knew from the point when he converted Sergius Paulus that he was going to spend the rest of his life amongst the Romans. And maybe he felt that a Roman name would give him better acceptance among them. Somewhat akin if a person comes to Canada and has a name that's very long and difficult for Canadians to pronounce, he might just shrug his shoulders and say, oh well, call me Bob. Um, not that that's a good thing, but that may have been Saul's motivation in saying, don't call me Saul or Shaul, as it would have been pronounced. Just call me Paul, a simple name that all the Romans would have understood. Another reason why Saul may have changed his name was simply that his first convert happened to be called Paul. And so Paul thought, if I call myself Paul, then every time someone says my name, I will remember that glorious day when I made my first convert to Jesus Christ. And that's a good reason for the name change. But I think the real reason is more powerful than those first two. 
The real reason lies in what the two names mean. The change from Saul to Paul isn't just a name change. It is a change in substance as to who this man is. What does the name Saul mean? Well, we all know who Saul is. And we know that Saul was born into a family that was powerful and wealthy and influential. And when the little baby was born, they said, what name will we give him that speaks of power? And what better name than the name of the first king of Israel? The first Saul was a giant, a warrior, a soldier who stood a foot taller than any other man in all of Israel, a leader and a man of influence. And they said, we will call our boy Saul, that he will grow to be great. And it worked. Saul grew up to be like King Saul, powerful and influential, a Pharisee, a Sanhedrin, the first amongst the persecutors of this horrible new religion called the Way. And mighty Saul had watched over the deaths of countless Christians as a zealous defender of the established and Orthodox Church. 